More than a thousand robots are expected to be working in New South Wales within the next decade. That's the prediction of Chamber of Manufacturers President Colin Bull, who says Australia already has 180 robots, with 54 working in Sydney's industrial areas. Mr Bull sees robots taking over the dirty and dangerous jobs, but they could be capable of a lot more, as Eyewitness News moneyman Colin Segalov reports in tonight's instalment of his series, Your Job on the Line. This is how most people imagine the robot of the future, and it could happen. I imagine we'll have robots which will um, think fairly clearly, specifically. There'll be advice-giving machines, and uh, they'll communicate with us in the easiest way for us, which is uh, speech. That prophetic statement may carry more weight with disbelievers when it's realised that it comes from a man involved in building this, Australia's first computer. It fills an entire room, but in the space of 30 years, what it can do has been more than matched by the miniature brain of the pocket calculator. This is how it looks, the so-called microprocessor chip, a dramatic piece of technology advancing at such a pace that we mortal beings will have a job to keep up. It's said the change in the lifetime of a five-year-old of today will be greater than man has experienced between the days of cave dwelling and the advent of computer technology. There's no doubt the robots are coming and they're going to change our lifestyle. The machines are very happy to work seven days a week and 24 hours a day. For us to man these machines, that means that we equally have to work 24 hours a day, which brings in the idea of the 32-hour week, or alternatively, the seven-day fortnight. That implies a continuing shift sequence of workers. Just what we allow robots to do is very much up to us. Some jobs they're welcome to. As for what they're capable of, reporter Ian Gillespie investigated that at Melbourne's Monash University. This might look like an ordinary little train set, but in fact it's been controlled by a sophisticated computer at Monash University. What it's been programmed to do is to put these little trucks into a certain order. But a logical extension of all this is that computers may eventually control the traffic of an entire city. It's not very hard to imagine these little sensors here being placed on either side of a busy, crowded street and controlling the sequence of traffic lights, even telling motorists which is the quickest way to get into the city. This small computer can operate that train set, balance that golf ball and play for itself a computerised version of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony all at the same time. Measured by your response to this week's special report series, there's a lot of interest in computers. As we told you last night, one of the features of Information Technology Week is free tuition on computers for beginners. You can find out more about that by ringing this number. And you can find out more about the extent to which your job may be on the line when Colin Segalov continues his series in...